I am about to say something surprising and maybe a bit scandalous. Ready? There is no command in the Bible about having a daily quiet time. Now, before you turn this video off, let me draw this out for you. How can I make such a scandalous statement? Because the idea of quiet time is actually a Christian cultural construct and not a biblical command. Now, when I say quiet time, what I mean is lengthy, private Bible reading that usually involves things like a perfectly quiet space where you are alone and no one interrupts you, an open Bible with a stack of beautiful study resources, commentaries, books to reference, uh, an hour or even two of luxurious time to read and meditate and pray, perhaps some soft music going on in the background, and definitely a hot cup of coffee and an inspirational mug, probably with Romans 8.28 printed on it. You know what I mean? That is what I mean when I say quiet time. And don't get me wrong, private Bible reading is good and it is a necessary thing for us. We want to meet with Jesus in his word and make that the priority and the pattern for our days, yes. But is there any biblical command like, you shall arise at five in the morning, coffee in hand, and spend time alone with the Lord for two hours? No. So I would argue that much of the guilt that we feel about reading our Bibles is false guilt, and much of the discouragement that we feel is unwarranted. Because friend, what the Bible actually commands is much broader, it's freer, it's better. Hear this from the word, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words I command you today shall be on your heart. Or Philippians 2, 16, hold fast to the word of life. Or John 15, 4, abide in me and I in you. God wants us to hunger for him, the bread of life, not a formula. He wants us to pursue our perfect savior, Jesus, not a perfect quiet time as if there were such a thing. So take a deep breath. Doesn't that feel great? And know this, that you can get creative with how you engage with your Bible. Now I'm going to say something else surprising. Have you considered that your main spiritual meal, your main source of nourishment is to be enjoyed at church? When you think about your Bible, does your thinking include the worship service? Now this might seem counterintuitive. After all, we're at church one or two days a week and we're with ourselves all the time. But scripture shows us that overarchingly, God's words have been directed to his gathered people not to individuals. This is what the Bible is. Consider the Old Testament. You have Moses speaking God's commands to the Israelites. You have prophets, Isaiah, uh, priests like Ezra and kings like Josiah, and they're delivering God's word to his gathered people. Consider the New Testament. What is it? It was composed for the early church. It tells us about events leading up to the church, the gospels, for example, writings to the church and prophecy about the church. The Lord clearly loves communicating with his people as the gathered church. So what does this mean? In other words, when you go to church, you're not just participating in a routine. This is the primary way that God intends to nourish your soul. This is your main meal. You need the church, friend and the church needs you. The church is not just a building, it's the living, breathing body of Jesus Christ and his body needs to be nourished in order to grow and thrive. Think about it, when you eat, what are you doing? You're giving your physical body what you need to survive, to stay healthy and ultimately to thrive. I'm a mom, I have three kids, and I cannot tell you how many meals I eat standing up <laughs> very quickly and how many snacks I throw in a baggie uh, for on-the-go eating. And snacks, they will sustain me for a time. But eventually, we need proper nourishment. We need a well-rounded meal. And that's what happens when we go to church and when the body of Christ worships together, our souls are nourished. We're not just snacking on the word. We're feasting, we're sitting down and enjoying God's word together. So take heart because everything that you miss 
or think that you miss, when your quiet time gets cut short or it doesn't happen, you get to receive that at church. You get the whole proper, well-rounded meal as you gather with your church family around God's life-giving word. That is such a gift. You sing his word, you pray his word, you read his word, and then you hear his word preached by your pastor. And if this robust meal, if, if this doesn't describe your church, or if you don't go to church, please, friend, don't let your soul be malnourished any longer. Your soul is too precious. And the body of Christ is too beautiful to be missed out on. You need the church and the church needs you. So if you're struggling with guilt or discouragement related to your Bible, take comfort because this main meal, this main spiritual meal matters for the good of your soul. Don't discount it. You get to worship in the word with your church family. And this is one of my favorite parts of our small group. I'm in a group with moms who have young kids and we meet together every week to read God's word and to, and to talk about the sermon. And you know, it's interesting because often we moms are lamenting uh, how hard it is to get in the word, how hard it is to have this quiet time um, like we feel that we're supposed to. And I was thinking about this and it occurred to me this was so ironic because the women in our group who were lamenting not being in their Bibles were doing just that together. And don't misunderstand me, attending corporate worship and small groups, it's not an excuse to stop reading your Bible on your own. Far from it. it it's an excuse instead to get creative, to break all the rules of, of quiet time and to find varied and fresh ways to bring God's word home to your heart to enjoy him in scripture again. There's an invitation that God gives in Isaiah 55. He says, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. And then God says, listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. So what are some ways that we might get creative, ways that we can listen and eat what is good and delight ourselves in the Lord? Well, the possibilities are numerous, but for now, I'm gonna highlight one method for nourishing your soul with the word, and then five ways that you can use the method. The method is meditation. Now, this is a loaded word, and when I say meditation, I don't mean the world's idea of emptying your mind. By meditation, I mean filling your mind with God's word. Meditation isn't just reading your Bible, but feeding on it. It's like the psalmist says in Psalm 119, 97, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. So what are we doing when we meditate? We are filling our minds with God's word so that it sticks with us throughout the day. We're mulling over what we're reading. We're not simply reading, but we're feeding. My husband, I always make fun of him for this, but he inhales his food. He's a really fast eater and I can't understand how he can possibly be enjoying it. He claims that he does. But using this illustration, meditation means slowing down to enjoy what God has to say to us. It means enjoying his word. We think about it, we ask questions about it, we apply it to our lives, we might use it as a springboard for prayer. Um, you could ask questions like, what does this passage tell me about who God is, about who I am, about the church, about the spiritual realm? You might use uh, a study method, an inductive method, observation, interpretation, application. So meditation is the method, and it can be used in whatever creative ways you choose. I'm going to give you five right now, but you'll find an entire list in my book, Help for the Hungry Soul. Ready? Okay, number one, listen to an audio Bible. I did this just the other day. We were packing our bags to come home from vacation and I didn't have time to sit down and read my Bible. So I just turned on the ESV audio Bible and listened to it that way. So do that while you're on the go. Um, number two, listen to a scripture saturated podcast. More and more of them are being created, but listen to someone meditate on scripture um, on your behalf and 
think their thoughts along with them. That's such a blessing to have a resource like that. Number three, memorize scripture. Um, that way it's always with you. You might write the first letters of words from a verse on your hand. I've done this before. And then throughout the day, look at the letters and see if you can memorize the verse based on the first letters. Do it with your kids. It's amazing what kids are able to remember. And it encourages me a ton when my kids memorize scripture because it makes me want to do it too. Number four, use uh, devotional resources with your kids. There are so many fantastic, robust, books that open up the word to kids in the simplest ways. And uh, this can nourish our souls as we parents sit down with them. And finally, number five, read the Bible with a friend. Don't do it by yourself. Um, there is shared and multiplied joy in sitting down with another person, whether it's a believer um, or an unbeliever, someone who's curious about the faith. Read the Bible with someone else and, and know that all of these ways, whether they seem small or very much in depth, all of these ways matter for the nourishment of your hungry soul. The living words of the living God are the food that our souls need to live. And what a blessing it is when we stop to think about what's happening. The God of the universe is inviting us to feast on his words in whatever ways we can, whether it's with our church family or by ourselves or with our families, feeding ourselves creatively throughout the week. Psalm 107.9 says he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. What a promise. May it be so for us. May God fill us with his spirit as we come to him through his son in his precious word.